Hi everyone. Um, I experienced something pretty amazing recently and I just wanted to uh, take a minute to share with you guys uh, what's been going on in my life. Um, uh, if you know me very well at all, <clears throat> you probably know that I have been struggling with um, chronic back and neck pain for many years. Um, it started with uh, an injury I had when I was 17. <clears throat> I, um, I actually just got up out of bed one morning and I just fainted. Um, it had never happened before, it's never happened since, um, but uh, I just dead faint, um, hit my head on the floor. And uh, when I woke up, I had <clears throat> a pretty insane um, headache and we went to the doctor and they just said, oh, you have really low blood pressure. I was really fit at the time, I was a runner. Um, they just said you have low blood pressure and that's why you fainted and that was that. Um, but what happened over the, the months and years was that I increasingly started to have neck pain. Um, so probably what had happened was that I had like thrown my atlas or thrown, you know, um, some of the bones in my neck and torn some ligaments. <clears throat> um, but it didn't get addressed right away because I wasn't having symptoms right away. Um, most likely what happened was that then my spine kind of started to compromise and it kind of set me up to injure my back in 2003 or four. Um, and I, I lifted something one day and I just felt something pull in my low back <clears throat> on the left side. Um, probably it was like an SI joint sprain or something like that. But um, I tried to go running that night and um, it didn't go so well. <laughs> uh, and basically from that day until this, I have not been able to run. Um, and I've had constant uh, chronic back pain that's made it pretty hard to do anything and pretty hard to live. Um, and um, the pain just kind of like gradually increased. I was in school when that second injury happened. Um, and so I was sitting a lot in class and the sitting just really aggravated my injury. And um, I did do physical therapy. I saw a doctor, <clears throat> but nothing really seemed to help. Um, I graduated from college and entered the workforce and I was working as a video editor, which is a lot more sitting. And so it was just like, it just became a really uh, terrible um, existence of like trying to work, but being in a lot of pain and then going to chiropractors, going to massage therapists and physical therapists, trying to get better. But um, all the sitting and working was just like uh, working against what I was trying to do. And it was a constant drain on my finances. Like I've probably spent tens of thousands of dollars in the last um, 15 years uh, trying to get better. Um, in 2010, uh, I reached a turning point um, where I just couldn't keep working. And so I actually uh, left LA for a year um, and I moved in with family and friends and just tried to rest for a while. And I wasn't working for about a year I went back to work, uh, but I was still kind of more or less dealing with the same problems. Um, I ended up taking a job um, in 2012 at Loma Linda, working as a video uh, producer and editor there. I ended up uh, leaving that position in 2015, um, partly again because I just couldn't seem to hold down a consistent job because of the pain that I was in. So I, I went back to freelancing so I could work at home. Um, among other reasons. So yeah, so anyway, um, it's it just has been a pretty crazy journey. Um, I haven't really been able to work out um, to exercise. Um, I had a leg injury as well, roughly around 2014 or 2015, and then it became hard to like take walks. Um, it just it just became so overwhelming and I was able to like sort of present this image to the world that I was doing kind of okay and I was still achieving and working, um, but um, I was actually dealing with a lot of anxiety and depression over uh, the pain and just the cycle of never been, being able to get out of it, um, never being able to get ahead with my medical care um, and just spending so much money. And so um, anyway, I, I reached a point, um, it was around, I want to say 2014 or 15, around the time that I ended up quitting my job at Loma Linda. Um, that I, I remember standing, I just remember standing in my office um, and saying, God, I know that you're a healer. The Bible says you're a healer. 
And if I have to pray every day until I'm 80 years old, I'm going to pray for my body to be healed um, because nothing else has helped. Um, and I just, I just realized at that point that I needed a miracle. There was nothing else that I could do. Um, so what was interesting was that from that point, God started leading me uh, to churches that actually believe in healing, that believe in biblical healing. Um, and I started to study and I started to learn that, um, that God wants us healed, like he wants us healthy. And I've been a Christian my whole life. I just um, haven't seen like miraculous healing modeled as part of church culture in most church communities. Um, but I found some churches that were modeling that, that were actually praying for the sick and that were seeing people get healed. Um, and I knew it was my only hope. So I just started getting involved in these communities as much as I could. And, and for me, it, it came back to like, I needed to be able to believe scripturally that um, it was the will of God to heal me. I didn't really trust like this preacher or that preacher. I just had to believe it from the word of God. And um, so I studied, I, I listened to sermon after sermon. I've probably listened to hundreds of sermons in the last few years um, on healing. It, it just has really become an obsession. And um, what, what finally convinced me that it was the will of God to heal my body was a sermon I heard by Pastor Dan Moeller, and he preached on Matthew 17. And Matthew 17 has the story of the boy who was brought to the disciples because he was having seizures and he was being thrown into the fire and da 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 da. And the disciples could not heal him. He was manifesting this extreme demonic thing and, and uh, the disciples could not help him. And uh, so they brought the boy to Jesus and Jesus healed the boy and he basically said to the disciples, um, where's your faith, you know? Um, and, and that story, um, the way that Dan Moeller presented it, he, he, he asked the audience the question, like, could the disciples heal the boy? And everyone said, no. <laughs> And then Dan said, but was it God's will to heal the boy? And the answer obviously is yes, because Jesus showed right up and healed the boy. And so, um, you know, our, our, uh, if we're not seeing healing, if we're not seeing miracles, it is not because it's not the will of God. It is because we have lost the faith for that. And some people get offended by that and they say, what do you mean I don't have enough faith? For me, I wasn't offended. I didn't take it as a criticism. I took it as an invitation. I knew I didn't have that kind of faith, but I also knew that I could get it and I could build that muscle. When Jesus said to the disciples, it's because of your unbelief, he was saying your minds are still twisted by the fall. And when you see what I'm seeing, you will do what I'm doing. And so that convinced me finally, and, and I became aware that there was never an example in the Gospels where Jesus turned someone, someone away or said, hey, you need to go build your character a little more, or hey, I just need you to like suffer through this so I can teach you a lesson. There was never a time Jesus said that. He healed everyone who came to him uh, without fail, even the man who said, help my unbelief. God helped him as well. Um, and so that convinced me, and from that point on, I, um, I went after it. I started to do a lot of fasting and I started to spend um, over an hour each morning in worship basically just praising God for healing me and also I began to use the power of my words because Jesus gave us authority um, and our words are powerful um, he said speak to the mountain and it will move so I started to do that even though it felt really weird at first I just started to say <laughs> to my back and say to my neck say to my leg be healed in the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you for healing me, I believe. Um, I started to do that on a regular basis. <clears throat> um, what started happening was not what I expected. Um, after some weeks of this, um, <clears throat> and I'm, it's a long story, so I'm going to give you the shorter version, but essentially what started happening was um, my... Muscles started shaking. Um, my hands started to uh, cramp up and go like this. My leg started shaking and starting to twist and contort. And um, it looked really demonic. <laughs> um, like my hands would basically become paralyzed from 
the upper arm down like this um, with all the veins popping out with excruciating pain. And I was like, okay, what the heck is going on with this? But um, I had to keep studying and what I, what I eventually learned um, and, and deduced was that um, I was basically being tormented by what they call what the, the Bible calls a spirit of infirmity, a demonic spirit that is tormenting you with pain and sickness. <clears throat> um, and I started ha having to learn how to um, cast out demons um, because there was something demonic that was tormenting and torturing my body. And a lot of people think a Christian can't have a demon. And it's very true that you, a, a Christian cannot be possessed by a demon because your spirit is possessed by the Holy Spirit. But we can still be harassed and tormented by the, the demonic realm. And, um, but Jesus has given us authority over that. Um, and, and, you know, some of the verses that, that helped me to understand what was going on and helped equip me to know how to deal with it, verses that started to really build my faith. Um, one example is Mark 16, 17 to 18. <clears throat> Jesus said to them, These signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands, and when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick people, and they will get well. Those are the words of Jesus, and so I, I kind of came face to face with the, um, the question, do I really believe what I say I believe? Do I really believe this gospel? Do I really believe Jesus? Do I really believe the words of Jesus? And, and you know, again, most of the church world doesn't really uh, believe in miraculous healing. They don't believe we can walk in that, and, and yet it's what Jesus said. Um, some other verses, um, some other things he said, which we're all familiar with, but we don't really believe. John 14, very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. I just started to read this stuff, and um, it, it says straight up, Jesus gave us authority to heal the sick and cast out demons. So um, I started to have this demonic thing manifesting in my very own body. Um, I couldn't deny it. A lot of people, even Christians, even Christians who believed in healing would tell me, Go, what you need to go see a doctor like what is going on with that and I was like what in the world would I tell a doctor like when I pray and when I worship my um my <laughs> leg starts twisting like a snake and my arms start cramping up like something crazy you know I knew what it was and I just um, kept building my faith I kept commanding it to leave and declaring and I actually ended up moving um, from LA up to Northern California uh, just over a year ago um, to actually live in a community, a Christian community that um, believes in healing and is already walking in, in the healing gift. Uh, I, I just knew that I had to completely renew my mind from, um, from one reality to a totally different reality where, um, where miracles are possible, you know, where what Jesus said is true, you know. And it was like such a massive shift of everything I've ever known that um, for me to, to build my faith to that level and, and to actually believe that the pain I had been suffering for, you know, at this point it was 15 years, um, could actually be healed and that I could run again. Um, and so I moved to be part of a Christian community that was already like walking in that because I knew I had to immerse myself in it and get it in my blood. Um, and I kept studying. Um, this thing, this demonic thing kept manifesting it it started to happen every single day anytime i would pray anytime i would worship it would start shaking it would start twisting it would start showing up um but it wasn't leaving and so i had to keep studying how do you cast out a demon how do you get it to leave you know my pain actually in the midst of all this actually started getting worse i um stepped off a stair and i actually like re tweaked my um my lower back like sacrum area and after that, there was like another level of instability in my sacrum um, and low back. Um, it, the last year has pretty much been the worst um, of my life physically. I actually couldn't really even bend over. Like if I dropped something on the floor, I had to try to pick it up with my toes. 
I haven't really been able to do much walking. Um, I can walk, but um, just like taking a walk would aggravate everything. So I've had to be really inactive the last year and a half. Um, my muscles have all atrophied quite a bit, um, but I kept pressing in um, to believe that I could be healed. Uh, and, um, and I kept praising and I kept declaring Eventually, about, I want to say six to eight months ago, I started saying, God, I know this is demonic. I know I'm like, it's not like nothing's happening when I'm praying. There's a lot happening. Like there's like a war going on in my body, right? But why isn't it leaving? Like, why am I not getting healed? And I started fasting again and the Lord started speaking to me immediately. And he was so faithful to reveal. I, I just started saying, God, what's hindering? Like there's something blocking. There's something that's blocking this healing. And, um, and he was so faithful to reveal to me several things that I just needed to, to deal with. One of them was unforgiveness because um, there were a lot of people over the years who had told me that my pain was pretty much just in my head and that I just was being a victim, that I didn't want to work. Um, and enough people said that kind of stuff to me that it kind of, it just did a lot of damage. It started to kind of mess with my own confidence in my own perceptions of reality um, and my own confidence in, you know, just myself and, and what I was experiencing. And um, so it just did a lot of damage. Um, and I was holding a lot of anger and bitterness toward those people. And the Lord told me that unforgiveness and bitterness is actually an open door to the demonic. And so I just started going through a process the last several months of like systematically dealing with the unforgiveness, starting to pray for those people, starting to bless those people, closing every single door to the enemy that I could in my life. Um, and, and, and again, I won't take too long on that because there's just so much. I'm happy to share with you guys one-on-one um, -on -one if anyone's curious. Um, my life is an open book. Um, <laughs> but suffice it to say that um, at the end of this process, um, I, I, I did everything God had showed me and, um, this may, I, I set up a time to pray with one of my mentors. Um, his name is SH. <laughs> we call him uncle SH. And, um, I had done everything that God had told me to do. And I, um, set up a time to pray with him and he prayed over me and um what happened again was not what I had expected um but as he prayed my neck started moving um it was um not anything that I was doing it was almost like something was pushing my head and it kind of pushed my head this way uh, and I felt the Lord say to me let it go just let it let it do let it run its course and my head moved like this, and then it moved over this way. And over the next hour and a half, it was as if this presence pushed my neck in every direction that it had not been able to move in over a decade. Um, because my range of motion had been so limited, I could, because of the neck injury, the muscles here were so tight. Um, I even had one massage therapist tell me, like feeling this area here, she said, I've been a therapist for 10 years and I've never seen anything like this because these muscles were like as hard as a rock, um, as hard as a bone. Like usually if I told people, hey, check this out, they'd be like, that's a bone. I'm like, nope, that's a muscle. <laughs> um, and anyway, so I hadn't, my range of motion was about like this. Like I can move my head about like that. Um, and I was very careful because my, everything would go out of alignment so easily. I wouldn't move it, you know, I would hardly move it at all. And and um, anyway, during this session, it was like this presence came and like actually physically forcibly pushed it. Um, it pushed it so far that like my ear was touching my shoulder. It pushed it so far that my chin was all the way down to my chest. It was excruciating, um, but I knew that something good was happening. Um, and this lasted like an hour, probably an hour and a half. Um, and at the end, my my neck was aligned um, and I knew that something really big in my life had changed that day. Um, a couple days later, I 
I started to feel some pain come back in my neck. So I just sat down and I said a quick prayer. And um, it was to my surprise, it started happening again. My neck just started moving slowly. It was just as if like somebody was there pushing it, <laughs> but it moved and took you know, 20 minutes and stretched out and then it came back into alignment. And this was May 15 that SH prayed for me and, you know, today's July 18. So it's been a couple months now. And every single day, basically since May 15, if, if I had any pain, I would sit down, I would just say a quick prayer and it would start. And and um, some of these, I don't, I don't know what to call them other than like Holy Spirit stretching sessions. Some of them would last two hours. I think I had one that lasted four hours and I have no control. Like it's just running its course. It is painful, which confused me for a while. But, um, I, and I was like, Lord, is this you? I don't, you know, it's, I don't know why it's so painful. But at the end, my neck would always be aligned and the pain would be gone. So this has been happening every day and it's just a miracle. I mean, it's just a flat out miracle. Um, and I know that my, basically whatever um, happened on May 15, it, it, I think that um, that demonic force was, was removed. And now my body's just able to heal. Um, there was a night that my friend Andrea came over and sat with me. Um, she was just on her computer and I was in the middle of one of these <laughs> stretching sessions. Um, and it lasted a couple hours, but when I got up, I just happened to go like this, and I noticed that um, this bone that had been protruding uh, really extremely for years, it was flat. You know, my neck posture had been very forward and all these muscles were like locked. And over the course of a couple weeks, um, it just straightened out. It's, it's, it's aligned where there used to be a bump of, um, of uh, due to the, the lack of posture and the tension, it's, it's aligned and it feels, and it feels tender, like tenderized meat. Meat, <laughs> that's a good description. Yeah, it's squishy here, it used to be hard as a rock. Um, I think it was, I still had the back injury. Um, but what happened was um, there was one night, uh, I think it was, it was June 28, June 28. Um, I was awake at night. I was awake early in the morning because um, my back was aching. And so I said a prayer over it. I just laid hands on it. And I said, in the name of Jesus, um, sacrum line up, back be healed, pelvis come into alignment, spine be aligned and restored in the name of Jesus. And, um, the same thing started happening to my low back. It was like all the muscles started writhing um, and it was like a pressure. There was like a force pushing on my spine and like over the next hour, it just, the muscles did their thing and it realigned and, um, and, it, and that has continued as well. Like every day, if I start to have pain, I just stop and say a prayer and immediately we'll go into this, um, this <laughs> experience, I don't know what to call it, but I know that I'm being healed and I know that I'm gonna run again um, and I'm gonna be able to hike again. And um, I mean, what can you take away from this but that um, Jesus is alive, you know, and he, he's real and um, he gave us authority in his name to heal the sick, to cast out demons, and to release the kingdom of heaven on this earth. Ephesians 1 says, The same power that resurrected Jesus from the dead is at work in those of us who believe. And if we're not seeing that today in Christian culture, it's not because God changed. Um, it's because we have lost the faith. Um, so I just, this is just kind of my impassioned plea. Um, the time that we're spending on media and on social media, how about we spend it getting to know God, you know? Not about Him, but getting to know Him. Um, he said our body is a temple for the Holy Spirit. We actually can host the presence of God. We can lay our hands on the sick and see them healed. We can see depression destroyed. He gave us that authority. 
Um, and my life is living proof of that. I'm really happy to, to talk more. There's so much more to this story than I've been able to share in this short um, video. But, um, but yeah, when you experience something like that, it's kind of hard to not talk about it. So I just had to share with you guys. Um, I love you guys. Um, I want to say thank you to the hundreds of people who have prayed with me over the last 15 years. Um, hundreds and hundreds of people and hundreds of prayers. Yeah, just uh, shout out to Darlene and Katora, my prayer sisters. We've, we've basically been praying almost every week for the last seven years for healing. Um, and uh, just, and I don't believe that it took seven years because God, we finally convinced God. No, I think it took seven years to raise my faith to the point of believing in the word of God <laughs> and what Jesus said out of his own two lips. <laughs> um, so healing's available. Um, yeah. Uh, let's do this thing for real.